names in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Shrap my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be going over the B57 reliability video for the, which is on the two litre diesel engines, which is all on the four series. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go over the engine and we're going to see how reliable this engine really is and if it's cheap enough to maintain. So as you can see here, guys, this is the B57 engine that BMW have now produced over the M47 because as you guys know, the M47 was plagued in problems with the timing chain failure, which was mostly the main issue of that engine and over the years bmw rectified that i believe by 2010 they rectified the issue but then by then they moved to this engine now this power plant is a twin power turbo engine so you know it's as it says a twin turbo engine now obviously as you see here <clears throat> this engine itself uses a lot of different computerized actuators which it regards right here and it also uses the electric egr valve as well and also uses an electric actuator for the turbo. Now, BMW have gone fully electric on this car, as you can see here. All the electrics running from even the boost pipe here, the in manifold pipe, all the way down to the intercooler. So, as you'll see, everything's electric on this. And it's one thing, if you're going to think of buying this car, you have to be aware of that there's a lot of different electronics on this car. And the amount of problems it's going to have, as you know, the DPF has now two sensors there and a load of sensors at the rear as well. Now, them sensors read, as I said, should have they have active and passive regen on these. Now, the sensors, they don't just have them here, they have them on the back of the exhaust as well because it reads the backflow of the exhaust. So it, it chooses when and where to do the DPF regen and if it's suitable by the style of driving you're doing. So you have to be aware of that. As I said to you, these cars use thermal panels, as I told you, to heat the car up quicker. Because as you guys know, diesels, when they're cold, cause a lot of carbon monoxide in the air, in the streets. And when people are driving them, especially in town driving. So these, car, these cars use thermal panels to heat them up very quickly. Also the DPF to stop it suiting up, clogging up, and also to get your engine up to a, a running efficiency quickly, quicker than all other cars. Now, as I said to you, the car itself, um, runs out everything on electric that being said this car is going to end up being very very expensive for people who are looking to buy this in f five years time this year or so on now if you're going to buy this car you're probably going to have the money but so you have to be aware of a lot of things this being all electronic you are not going to be able to ch check the wastegates like you could on a previous old car because they're not manually or vacuum operated that being said, you're going to need to use a program like ISTA to be able to diagnose all these actuators because everything's electronic. Yes, it makes it easier to diagnose, but in the long term, it's going to make it more expensive because it uses an electronic component. Obviously, as you know, Germany only use their own people that make their own components. That being said, the solenoids on these, the actuators, the computer itself that are built into the actuator is going to be built by a German provider and German providers charge quite a lot of money. Now, your best advice, which you went to go and buy one of these, is check all around here for oil leaking, which oil by 100,000 miles should probably be leaking down here. It will never be as clean as this engine, as, as to say. As you see here, the EGR is running all up here. This is the EGR cooler. I can see it behind there. As you'll see, running down here into the, e, into that, into the EGR port itself, going back to the exhaust manifold. Now, in years to come, people are going to think of blanking this off. And I'm going to tell you now, you can't because it's got a sensor right there that reads the port itself. It can probably be deleted out of the ECU, yes. But I believe these engines will mess up without the whole DPF system. Because as you know, they're Euro 6. They are built on using everything to try and make them as efficient and emission friendly as possible. So by removing all this, I believe it will cause more harm than good to these engines. You'll see here there's a lot of different electronics, even for... The charge pipe itself you've also got one on the airbox here which will be the maths math sensor you've also got the map sensor right up here with a load of other sensors everything on this is electronic i haven't seen any vacuum lines at all run into this car so far even like i said to you you have to be careful when you come and check this car your best thing to take you will be ista because ista will be able to tell you if there's any problems with any kind of electronic component in this which makes it very easy to diagnose and you'll know exactly what the fault is and where to replace it because it will show you where to replace it. These cars are becoming more and more computerized to the point you cannot, will not be able to diagnose them just by going and seeing the car. It'll be something you'll have to take a diagnostic scanner with you. Um, this is why these cars are gonna end up being very, very cheap 
later on down the line because of this reason, because of them being so so computerized, people who ain't really familiar with computers or dealing with diagnostics or have the proper diagnostics like the BMW software will not be able to diagnose these cars, hence the sales will drop dramatically because nobody else can diagnose them. Now, that being said, even if you do have the software, you have to know how to use it because a lot of these parts need recoding and probably reprogramming back to the, the car itself. Now, if you don't know how to do that, that's going to be a big off-put as well because, like I say, it's going to work out a massive expense if you buy this car and you're taking it to BMW to have everything done. If you're going to buy it, you need to be a suitable owner who already is aware of how to use the software, but also aware of how to fix your own car as well because it doesn't just rely on the software, it also relies on fixing the car, but to diagnose the car, you're going to need the software. Now, as I said to you, this car doesn't really have many problems yet because it's still low mileage. You can see the one vacuum line running there, which is a red one, which will probably be perished later on in life. But like I say, I don't think they, they don't use the swell flaps anymore on this engine. They got rid of that whole system. But like I said, the majority of the components, this is a very, very easy engine to service and maintain. As you'll see here, the crankcase breather, which is right up here and it's breathing by, by itself. It ain't blocked off, which is right at the back of the engine there. So you'll see that there, that's the valve right there at the back. Now, as you'll see, the alternator is made by Denso, which is shocking, BMW never used to use them. These four cylinder engines itself are rel will be reliable only if maintained properly. The problem with these two litre diesels is they drop on value and everyone goes and buys them, treats them like rubbish and then gets rid of them and then leaves everyone else with a massive expense. The only good thing about this is you can't just be a mechanic anymore. You have to know what you're doing with the software. If you don't know what you're doing with the software, you will not be able to buy this car or even own this car, which is a good plus for people like us who know how to repair them and also know how to diagnose them and also code and program because as you've just seen, like I showed you, every sensor from the actuator to all the waste gates, to all the DPF system, to the sensors, everywhere are all electronic that's a plus for people like us the same with the headlights go out like i said i'm going to try and work out a way to delete the eproms from these so that way used headlights can be refitted to these cars because that's going to be a big big plus and a big big off put for people looking to buy that because headlights are going to be expensive because you're going to the bmw are forcing you to only buy parts from them you will not be able to buy parts from scrap yards anymore for cars or buy second hand parts off ebay that's what they want you to do obviously there's always a way around it the same with the mbt inside the car you know there's always a way around fixing this and you guys have to be aware of that that these cars are now gone completely computerized everything on this engine is computerized everything i can see is running with a sensor the good thing as i said these are going to be very easy to diagnose which makes it very easy. But you also have to have mechanical skills to fix these cars. They will have problems with the turbos. They will definitely have problems with the actuators because they're electronic. They will have problems with the EGR. That's just gonna be the way it goes later on in life. People will use these for short trips. You can't tell everyone to use it for long trips. I always tell people, if you're gonna use it for short trips, go and buy yourself petrol. Don't buy yourself a diesel. These cars need to be driven and they need to be driven for quite a few miles to let the regeneration. That is what looks after these cars. You can't buy these cars and pot around town. It just don't happen. The pottering around town destroys these cars. You do no good for them whatsoever. If that's what you're gonna use it for, avoid this car. But like I say, these engines are gonna be strong and reliable. They're not like the M47 engine, thank God. These are gonna be more reliable b47 engine and i believe these will go on and on for years to come and anyone who watches this video if you do go and buy a two liter diesel please comment down below if you buy on high mileage let me know if you've had any problems or experienced any problems with this engine because like i say i'll probably find out a lot of people are going to be struggling to diagnose this car because it's all electronic you can't just pull something off you can pull a sensor off to see if it's not working but you can't just pull something off to see if it's bad or not bad you'll have to use a scanner that's the only way of diagnosing it and that's the way bmw intended it to be that you have to go back to them to have it diagnosed with the proper software and that being said i hope to have it plugged up to my software so i can see if a cheap scanner will even detect certain codes, which their software can, obviously BMW software can detect every code, but I wanna see if the cheaper software can detect any codes on this car, which probably won't be the case. Because BMW wanna make it so hard that you can't just go and buy your cheap 10 pound scanner online and be able to detect the code. Now guys, if you're thinking of buying this car, my best advice to you, don't use a cheap scanner. Make sure your best software is ISTA for this car. 
and that's petrol or diesel because everything's going to be electronic that's the same with the m55 engine and you want to be sure be 100 percent sure that like i said the code is correct when you're getting them p0 codes then p0 codes probably ain't even out for this car yet like i say it's still too new bmw are only releasing specific codes for that reason so then that way you have to go back to them like i said though apart from that this car is reliable so that's it guys at least we can truly say this car is reliable for now at least who knows in years to come so guys as you've just seen there we've been over the reliability issues um as i say please stay tuned if you're new watching my videos and you're looking to buy an f-series because we are going to be doing a how to use ista on the f-series as well so you guys if you do get any fault codes or you need to check anything i'm going to show you on ista how you can check your actuators how you can check all your certain components on the car without having to start pulling things off and trying to struggle to find the cause of the problem we will be doing that on the video obviously i just wanted to give you guys a heads up on these cars like I said to you, injectors, turbos, DPF, they're the main things that fail on the diesel. They're the main things that stop this car running. Apart from the engine itself, it will be reliable. There is no timing chain issues on the B57 so far. So far, so good. BMW have done an excellent job of designing this engine. Like I said, the M47 was plagued in problems. They've learned their lesson. They learned their lesson from the people complaining and moaning and obviously all the complaints they had about their lack of owner care to the people they've corrected that problem. And now they're back and they're doing better than ever. I believe these cars are cracking. The engine is cracking, they produced, and it delivers so much low down power. If you guys are driving a 120D now, E87, any of them, this reduces way, way much more better power than that car has ever done, the M47 engine. These feel power, that these feel incredibly quick and they feel absolutely phenomenal. But as always guys, thank you very much for watching this BMW Dr. Dini. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and goodbye.